Good evening. It is early Wednesday morning, February 29th. I'm at home doing a video to share some of my latest record and antique vintage finds from my uh, last set of days off here. I started out Sunday, had a blast. Uh, met up with a friend uh, down in Olympia, did a little bar hopping, it was awesome. Um, Let's see, that was Sunday. Monday, I believe I went antiquing, or it could have been Sunday. I, no, it was it was Monday, and I did antiquing today, too. But um, I start with um, some of the least spectacular and even non-vintage items, and that is this. Awesome candle lantern uh, thing and uh, I have something similar to it wood I'm gonna hang that uh, next to it in the center of the living room here and uh, it casts nice shadows up on the ceiling very cool Yum. let's see started off uh, yeah, it was uh, Monday. I went to Finders Keepers again. I love this antique mall in Olympia. And I got a few recipe boxes. Like this uh, one here. It's kind of an avocado green and you know, harvest gold and burnt orange on the leaves. And it's got nice index cards in it. I'm going to actually put recipes in that. And then to store things, maybe like my Victrola needles and things, I don't know, another uh, a plaid one, brown. This is, could be, you know, kind of a 70s, uh, late 70s, early 80s one even, maybe? And this one's hard to say. It is a plaid one, probably 60s, 70s. Um, Probably late 60s, don't you think? I don't know. But those were really fun. Uh, I love Fire King mugs, and I love rotating my coffee mugs, because I'm tired of having the same, I get tired of having the same coffee mug in front of my face all the time when I make breakfast. So I picked up a, this is a Fire King, and I love the uh, diamond pattern. Very cool, very fun. And another coffee mug, this time not Fire King, but a similar style that they make, a footed. This is Homer Laughlin Best China, USA. And I had never seen this before until I saw it in the shop. And it reminds me of I don't know, it, 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 it's so, who knows, it could be out of the 50s, 60s, who knows, but um, I love the kind of harvest gold color on it, and uh, it just reminds me of something that maybe would have come out of like something like a bowling alley coffee shop, you know, it kind of reminds me of like Brunswick or <laughs> something, anyway, I just, I loved it, how cool, how fun, oh. Yeah, and then uh, I had been eyeing this s probably early 60s, wouldn't you think? Uh, kind of uh, starburst green, avocado greenish uh, kind of kitchen clock. Lux, uh, made in USA, um, in, in decent condition. I don't know if it works, but that that's okay because uh, I just really bought it to kind of go around with some of my avocado green stuff I got. Uh, let's see. And, uh, oh, let's see. This, uh, more World's Fair, 1962 Seattle World's Fair stuff. This was uh, Northwest Coast Indian art, and I have taken and liking an interest to it living in this part of the country in the Pacific Northwest with the Native American coastal Pacific Northwest Indian artwork. 
um, very cool, very cool. Anyway, this was from um, an exhibit at the World's Fair. Very cool. So I'm going to put this with my 1962 World's Fair stuff. Um, and today, oh, one more thing. Uh, and for the blue rotary dial phone over here, I had gone down, I think it was the other day, to look for this kind of brassy mid-century atomic mag, uh, not magazine rack, uh, phone stand and I had looked at it and um, I called about it and they couldn't find it you know it had, it had been sold I, d I didn't think I had anywhere to put it I liked the thing and then I was looking around and I saw well, perfect to the side of my couch there was uh, some space but uh, I went looking for it and it was gone so I found this kind of primitive traditional kind of who knows what Victorian kind of style just kind of pedestal stand plant stand but anyway the phone fits perfect on there and to the side of the couch and uh, that will suffice until I find something better by the way if I didn't mention playing on the great late Uncle Walter Sears Craftsman Hi-Fi with its fabulous four-speed turntable is Sergio Mendes Brazil 65 in person at El Matador and uh, I found that today down in Olympia this uh, used books and uh, music store uh, or used bookstore that also had some vinyl and been in in a while and so I got that and then this which I had seen a long time ago and it, it never sold but I, I, I passed it up a long time back and it looks like it's uh Chilean from the country of Chile and if I can pronounce this what I believe is Spanish properly it, I think that it says Cuenca Musica y Paisa yeah which I, I don't know what it means um, but uh, I don't know how to describe the music but it, it's kind of folk and I just like the int uh, instrumentation in the group violin accordion piano Guitar, mandolin, banjo, flute, and um, organ. Uh, it was really cool. It made good cooking music. And I just pulled out my mastacholi and set it up on the oven out of my late 50s or 50s, 1960s Pyrex casserole blue snowflake. And so that made fun cooking music. Today, I went back to Finder's Keepers and I picked up a few things I had been eyeing. The most spectacular of the finds was this awesome, modern, yellow, harvest goldy color um, clock. It's just a desk clock. And uh, I'm going to put this next to my Stromberg Carlson orange touchtone phone on my desk. And uh, it is a Sankyo Time Glow. Uh, Japan it has Japanese Japanese stamp on the back. Sankyo Seiki Manufacturing Company Limited in Japan. Huh? I have absolutely no idea. You know what time period this is out of, but you know most definitely 60s, 70s. Um, this I had been eyeing, and I had absolutely no idea where to put him. This little green Asian ceramic figure holding a pot for a flower or something. But um, he has a lot of nice wear that gives him character. It's very distressed. But uh, I thought he was cool, but I thought, gosh, you know, I have enough crap. Where am I going to put him? And then it suddenly hit me next to, on the shelf above my bed, next to this cast iron sort of uh, pagoda um, type lantern that I have up there. It'll look pretty cool up there. So I'm glad I grabbed him. I was surprised he was there as long as he has been. But um, interesting, probably out of the 
probably out of the 50s, maybe 40s, uh, you know, it's hard to say, but, uh, you know, these, ex like, exploited Asian kind of, um, decorations were popular back then. That's probably what he's a part of. Ah, and then I love this. I love Pyrex, as you know. Um, I've always loved the autumn harvest or harvest wheat, uh, pattern and this color um, according to this awesome website pyrexlove.com uh, built and maintained by these pyrex lover nuts and hobbyist enthusiasts um, this started in 82 and I find that kind of hard to believe but um, I remember this kind of ready orange dark deep brown red orange was popular in the early 80s and I have a, a set of mixing bowls, which I use from time to time uh, for uh, brown and then this like lighter orange or orangey color. Uh, and then this I had been looking at, it, it, it says coffee on it. It's just a Pyrex um, canister and I'm just going to throw it in my uh, cupboard or pantry and use it for something. I spent uh, my days off cleaning out my cupboards and organizing and this was just the, the hugest thing of today next to the clock and uh, I finally made it to this new shop in uh, Olympia that opened up called the Mod Fix on Capitol and it's all mid-century modern furniture uh, with a lot of books um, on decorating for the Atomic Ranch House owner and stuff like that. They had a lot of books on photography of mid-century architecture and stuff, you know, out there that's still holding on in existence. Really cool. But uh, I found a couple sets of super retro Franciscan Starburst. A uh, two teacups, I believe, or saucers and cups. Very nice shape, no cracks, no chips, and then a couple uh, small side plates. And uh, I have a gravy boat, and so I'm slowly but surely starting a my collection of this stuff. I'd at least like, at least like to make up a couple plate settings to have on my table, maybe. So I might display these on my kitchen table uh, year-round regularly very cool stuff love it and then not retro or atomic or mid-century at all really is this uh, rug beater and I think I'm gonna hang this in my kitchen on the side of cabinets but I've always thought these are pretty cool and I mean I have absolutely no idea what decade um, this would be out of I'm, 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 I'm guessing maybe the teens or the up to the 20s or uh, who knows if, it, if it's antique at all but I would think it is it's got a, a black coating to the wire which is chipping in a lot of areas it gives it character but I've always thought these are kind of cool and uh, make some uh, a nice uh, art piece um, to hang on the wall. Heck, I might even use it for my uh, ch -ch -ch rag rug in the kitchen or something. Um, oh! Another great find and something useful, clothes, wearable, uh, was this awesome uh, wool shirt, flannel. And I got this at Dumpster Values in downtown Olympia, a, a vintage clothing store. And it looks homemade. I thought so. And this uh, barista that made me coffee commented on it and complimented it. She liked it and, and she looked at it close and she, she thought it, she was, um, she's fairly into uh, vintage clothes and she thought it was um, handmade, homemade. There are no tags or any washing instructions on it anywhere. And um, <clears throat> it could be quite old, very vintage, maybe even, I mean, judging from the color, 
60s, 70s, I mean, maybe earlier. I mean, that kind of button, I don't know. I think it might be a stretch to say 40s with this kind of color, but I love the, um, <clears throat> I love that, you know, kind of harvest gold mustardy color and the kind of burnt orange and uh, black. Anyway, it seems like a, it's all 100% wool, I would imagine. And uh, I love the thick um, threads and, and, and heavy weave. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but I wore that today and it was a hit and uh, it w kept me warm. It's uh, around freezing in February here in Washington and miserable and I can't wait to get through winter time uh, so I can do some camping. And uh, that is completes all, oh, wait, no, we're almost done. eBay scores. Uh, I got this on eBay, a um, West Bend cookware um, recipe book. And um, I had picked up a couple avocado green hands. I love this in the back that shows all the different models in green and harvest gold and paprika. Um, I picked up a couple uh, saucepans like those the other day. So this is fun. 1969. I also would like to get a uh, the 1968 copy. I guess I, um, I've kind of learned that uh, there was a changeover in their logo between 1968 and 9. Like I have my pans are at least a year earlier than this, so mine are 1968 and earlier, I would believe. But, um, awesome recipes in here, and great old school food photography. <laughs> like it. Ah, music! Uh, oh my goodness gracious, I had been searching for this. I lost an auction on it some time back, and this record went for quite a bit. You know, plenty of um, 78 collectors had been obviously waiting and searching eBay for some time. A little bit of a gentle lamination cracks on it here and there, but... Uh, Henderson Stomp, Fletcher Henderson and his orchestra, hot jazz, love Henderson Stomp, can't believe I found a copy of it, it actually looks a little bit gray or worn, but it's just um, very dusty, and I need to clean it and get out my old school 78 duster and dust it deeply. Uh, on Brunswick, Eddie Duchin, uh, I've Told Every Little Star, love that song, and what another great side, The Song Is You, oh, I'll play that on the, the credenza, I believe that's some out of the uh, 30s, and let's see what else, ah, today down in Olympia where I got that uh, lantern candle holder thing that I, I first started the video out with, uh, I found a stack of Victrola records at this one variety sort of boutique kind of place. It was like new a mixture of new and vintage. Uh, found a stack of Victrola records. Uh, most of them were Scandinavian and ethnic uh, stuff, you know, hambos and uh, all that, which I think is cool being uh, of Scandinavian heritage myself and having been to Sweden three times to visit my family, but I only have so much room and time for collecting and listening uh, records, so <laughs> I passed, you know, passed them all up, except for this sleeve, which I put this record in, and it's an orthophonic Victor sleeve, and I, I, I have never seen this particular sleeve with this orange print. Very cool. Uh, for all I know, it's common, and whoever you are watching in whatever part of the country you live in, maybe they turn up a lot, but I have, this is the first time I have ever seen this sleeve. So my guess is it is post-Victor um, and maybe RCA-era owned Victor sleeve, but I, I, it doesn't look like it. So I don't know. I'm, I might have to 
consult with my phonograph club members and even maybe uh, put up a discussion kind of poster or email out about this. Very cool. And anyway, the record I found here on just Victor's scroll is uh, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, Trinity Choir, Mixed Voices with Pipe Organ. Awesome Easter resurrection hymn. And being Catholic, I love it and collect some sacred and Christian um, and hymn uh, Victrola records and play them. And uh, I'm I'm dying to listen to it, but I'm kind of thinking I might try to like actually fast from it through Lent. And when Easter comes, I will play it on Easter Day and see just how it sounds. I have a few other acoustically recorded uh, versions of it by other groups in my collection of sacred stuff. So uh, that was pretty cool. Anyway, I believe that completes. Oh no. Oh, something behind me picked up a nice, good, usable 50s Samsonite um, suitcase. And uh, it's so clean inside and it doesn't smell and they really don't turn up any nicer than this. And I plan on putting that underneath my coffee table and storing away some... Um, paper items. Um, I was originally thinking I would house my World's Fair collection in there, like my you know 1962 World's Fair newspapers and stuff like that. But the newspapers don't quite fit, so I'm going to have to stuff something else in there. But um, a good way to protect the stuff. Anyway, that concludes my video of finds, and I hope you enjoyed my little video here sharing my vintage finds and purchases from today. It was a very fun weekend. Thanks for watching. Bye.